This week, an inside look at the orchestra concert, intro to food's final projects, two seniors and their band, and the best wings in Omaha, all here on the MWHS Wildcat News. Welcome back, Wildcats. We hope you had a fun break and are ready to start the second semester. I'm Miguel Protis Reyes. And I'm Riley Kramlich. Before we left for break, orchestra had their first concert of the year. News director Caitlin Reynolds talked to some musicians to get their thoughts on the performance. On Thursday, October 7th, the symphony orchestra gathered in the school auditorium for their first performance of the year. The student musicians were given the opportunity to select the theme of the fall concert. The students came up with about 15 different things that they thought would be good. And we whittled it down over a couple days down to the idea of using a musical because we combined some of their ideas together because it would work. And from there, it just was picking literature and finding out what we want to do with the silliness from the show. Leading up to the performance, the group practiced the musical themed pieces each day during first block. Section leaders helped to guide their fellow classmates as they rehearsed and mastered the complex music. It's a really difficult process. And we had sectionals each Monday and I was leading them, and it just felt nice to be like a good leader to them. The best part about this whole process was probably just getting to know my section a little bit more because I didn't know most of them because they're sophomores and I'm a senior, and they were in Philharmonic before, and it was just nice to get to know them. Not only did the concert showcase their Broadway-based music, but also their unique attire for the event. We all um, took one of the musicals and made our outfits themed around it. Basses got Hamilton, and we got Annie. The first violins got West Side Story, and the violas got the Les Mis musical. All of the musicians involved participated in the costume aspect of the show, including the conductor. I didn't get to decide what my costume was. I was dictated to by the L team as well. So uh, the L team leadership team, uh, they run independently of, of me for the most part and uh, kind of act as like a little parliamentary group. And then they bring me ideas. And one of the ones when we were doing Lion King, they were like, you need to dress up as Simba. And it was given to me. So I was like, I can do that. The performance gave the student group a chance to display the musical pieces that they worked on throughout first semester while also having fun with the theme. This has been Caitlin Reynolds with the MWHS Wildcat News. As many classes were wrapping up their terms of long tests and essays, the Intro to Foods class had a much more hands-on experience to demonstrate the understanding of what they learned throughout the class. Social Media Manager Brooke Sliva and News Director Caitlin Reynolds bring you the delicious details. On October 14th and 15th, just before the end of the first semester, students in Intro to Foods and Nutrition created their final projects for the class, which incorporated many aspects of the course's curriculum and a celebration. We cook every other day, so during that week they have a work day um, three times a week. So they work on centerpieces and decorations and placemats and name cards. Uh, and then they get to pick their recipe for the final project, which I think they think is the most fun part. On the day of the final project, students had to read recipes, collect their ingredients, prepare and cook the food, and clean up their workspace along the way. One of us had to do all the research related to foods not having a lot of salt. Some of us had to come up with ideas for placemats, um, name tags, and um, a, like a design for under the hood of the stove. In addition to creating a theme and making a culinary dish, each group was tasked with tailoring their final project to a specific dietary requirement. So I assign each kitchen group a disease um, or a diet to follow. I think it's important that they learn how to accommodate for different people throughout their life um, to make it nice for everyone to enjoy the food and it shows that it is easy to accommodate for those people. Students were given the opportunity to pick a theme for the celebratory party culminating the assignment. The groups in the class work together to determine the dish made and the decorations for the kitchen space. We'll talk together about like what we liked and like stuff that we all were interested in and we all kind of came upon the idea of like we all like this beach theme. Following their presentations, the students enjoyed the creations that they spent the last days of class making. This is Ben, Brooks Liva, and Caitlin Reynolds with the MWHS Wildcat News. Tonight is the last regular season football game against Lincoln Northeast. We hope to see everybody there cheering on our Wildcats. The theme is Western. Last April at the Best of West Talent Show, we got a sneak preview of the guitarist and drummer duo that is Soda Spill. The two seniors, Nolan Nemitz and David Hodges, have been trying to break out onto the music scene for some time and are even working on an album. 
I interviewed them to get a closer look at what these rot stars are really about. Seniors Nolan Nemitz and David Hodges make up the band known as Soda Spill. The band started just a few years ago with Hodges as the one who brought it all together. It was a couple of my friends and I, like, he just learned how to play guitar and I just learned how to play drums, so we got together and we started jamming. I used to go to this bar and grill place that would have open mic nights every Tuesday and that's where I met my friend Jackson. He was in the band for a little bit. Nemitz joined later when he and Hodges bonded over their love for music. I got started when I first met David at Homecoming. We were both playing chopsticks together, like we're drummers, and we got our, we uh, then started talking about like music and what we like, bands we like, like Led Zeppelin and Greta Van Fleet. We are really connected from there and then we just started playing together ever since. Both of their musical upbringings come from a young age, with both of their beginnings immersing themselves into their work. Whenever I was in sixth grade is when I really started playing and then of course when high school started and I met my friends who played guitar that made me become a better drummer. And I started playing from like, you know, I learned from Guitar Hero and then I like quickly evolved after that because I moved into Rocksmith which is like actually playing guitar and it's also like a video game which is cool. And then I kind of, you know, just started watching YouTube videos and learning for myself and went from there. The two showed off their music last April at the Best of West talent show, which caught the attention of all who attended and winning first place in audience choice. It was really fun to see like just two musicians just like into the rock and roll. Um, and the other reason is because I just love live music. I knew a bunch of kids in high school that had bands and college kids that had bands, local bands. So like local music, I'm a huge supporter of. Although their fan base isn't the biggest, it's their love for music and their aspirations that keep the two going. One thing that has like kept this band together is like we both love to play. It's like our whole entire lives. And we try to, we're trying to make an album right now. We're trying to get a bunch of songs together. Some of the old songs we had like don't fit for it, maybe throwing the idea of like a concept. For the MWHS Wildcat News, this has been Miguel Paredes Reyes. DECA is sponsoring a boys volleyball game next Thursday. The event is to help raise awareness for congenital heart disease. All proceeds go to Heart Heroes. The game is at 6.30 and tickets are $5. Editor-in-Chief Evan Vaslo and staff reporter Joseph Edmeyer are back reviewing the best food Omaha has to offer. This time around, they flew around town looking for the best wings. So many great meals start with wings as an appetizer, and some good wings can really elevate the meal that follows. Joseph Edmeyer and I traveled around town to find the best wings, sticking to the most popular flavor at each stop. To help us out, we brought our class pet Jumanji along, too. Our search started at Ray's Wings and Pizza. When we asked for the most popular flavor, we were steered toward the traditional buffalo wings. The sauce had a very nice flavor, but wasn't very evenly distributed. The wings were drowning while the drumsticks didn't hold much sauce. A quick drive down Leavenworth landed us at Trax Lounge, ready to sample the garlic parmesan wings. The wings were very tender and meaty and smothered with a savory, creamy garlic sauce, setting a high bar for the rest of the wings to come. Wings and Rings also recommended the classic buffalo wings. They got the job done, but just adequately. They felt a little lazy and lacked the care and love evident in the previous two locations. Wingstop prescribed us a small batch of garlic parmesan wings. Both of us were sorely disappointed by the dry, cold meat and excessively long wait. Buffalo Wild Wings got us back on track with their honey barbecue wings. The flavor of the sauce was good, but the texture was weirdly sticky. Our final stop, Oscars, was the third place to recommend buffalo wings, and they clearly did it best. The sauce had a strong flavor to it and was perfectly distributed over the crispy and tender wings and drumsticks. Our search turned out a variety of flavors and qualities of wings. And although Joe and I disagreed about our favorites, Trax Garlic Parm's average score was the highest, earning it the title of Best Wings in Omaha. This is Ben, Joseph Abmeyer, Jumanji, and Evan Vaslo for the MWHS Wildcat News. Before we go, we'd like to remind seniors that their senior pictures and tributes are due on November 1st. If you have any questions, check the daily announcements or contact Mr. Hilburn. If you want to keep up to date with all of our publications, follow us on our social media and check out our website. For the MWHS Wildcat News, this has been Miguel Paredes Reyes and Riley Cramlish.